Hello again everyone, and I'm continuing to test my way through all these new Canon lenses that have just hit the market, and today we come across their new flagship macro lens, the RF 100mm f2.8 L Macro IS USM. Canon have been putting together these popular 100mm macro lenses for decades now. This latest one sees quite an increase in price to US$1400 or nearly £1500 in the UK. But it has a couple of new features, such as a new 1.4 times magnification ratio, which gets you closer than ever to your subject, as you can see here. And also, the lens features a curious spherical aberration control mechanism. If you turn that SA control ring to the left, then the image zooms out slightly, your subject gets a soft focus effect, and your backgrounds look increasingly soft. If you turn that control ring to the right, however, then the image zooms in slightly, you get the soft focus again on your subject, but this time the bokeh becomes much, much harsher. Some people do actually quite like a background with busy looking bokeh, though. Here are some more pictures so you can get an idea of it. The feature certainly increases your options for portrait and subject photography. While the soft focus effect on your subject is quite easy to do yourself in editing, the change in style of bokeh would be virtually impossible, so there are some photographers who might be seriously interested in this. But for those who aren't interested, you can lock that control dial in the normal position if you want to, to prevent accidentally changing it. I'd like to thank Canon UK for loaning me this lens for a couple of weeks for testing, although as usual, this is a totally independent review. Let's look at the lens's body first, and it's your typical Canon L lens build quality here, lots of very heavy duty plastic, but also with a decent amount of weather sealing. Its weight is about 650 grams or about one and a half pounds, about average for this kind of macro lens, although it's a bit bigger than I expected. There are switches on the side to control focus and image stabilization. The image stabilization on this lens worked, well, it worked very well in stills mode, but in video mode, the footage still looked a bit shaky on my Canon EOS R5. I have noticed that on some other lenses too. I will be sending my R5 away to be checked, just in case the camera is the issue. The manual focus ring is rubberized and works smoothly and responsively with the lens's focus motor. The lens does suffer with some focus breathing, zooming in a bit as you focus more closely, but it's actually not as bad as you often see on a macro lens. The lens's autofocus system is spectacular. It incorporates dual nano USM autofocus motors, making the autofocus performance almost instantaneous, as well as being silent and accurate. Canon truly are at the top of their autofocus game. At the top of the lens, there's also one of Canon's neat control rings, which has gentle clicks to it. You can customise it on your camera to perform various different actions, or even send your lens away to Canon to have that control ring de-clicked uh, for a price. The lens comes with a decently sized plastic hood, and its filter size is 67mm wide. Overall, the build quality is second to none here, everything you could possibly ask for, especially with that amazing autofocus motor. Now onto image quality. I'll be testing it today on a Canon EOS R5 with its full frame 45 megapixel sensor. In camera corrections are turned on. At f2.8, the lens is ridiculously sharp in the middle of the image with excellent contrast, and the corner image quality virtually as good, perhaps with just an edge less sharpness, but still amazing. f4 looks about the same. Let's top down to f5.6. Oddly, the lens looks just a tiny bit softer here, which shouldn't happen. Also, the middle of the image looks just a tiny, tiny bit softer too. Stop down to f8, and it looks a tiny bit softer again. What's going on? Well, I took each of these photos with autofocus, which I wouldn't normally do when testing lenses. I did that deliberately. Here's a shot at f8 using manual focus, which, as you can see, is just a tiny bit sharper. This lens is suffering from something called focus shift. That is, when you stop the aperture down, the plane of focus shifts backwards slightly. That's a problem for Canon's cameras, because they all autofocus with their apertures wide open. The slight difference is still there, even when you stop down to f11. That's not good, but thankfully, the effect isn't too pronounced. 
If you need absolutely critical sharpness, you may need to manually focus if you're stopping this lens down. Could be a little annoying for some people. Anyway, this is a macro lens, so let's take a look at close-up image quality. These pictures are taken at the maximum 1.4 times magnification. At f2.8, close-up image quality is very sharp. Stop down to f4 and it becomes excellent. If you stop down as far as f8, then the softness begins to creep in due to the effect of diffraction, which will always take hold a bit sooner when you're shooting close up. Here is f11 and f16, which both get very soft. So, a typical performance for a good quality macro lens here, nice and sharp. Oddly enough, for me, the problem with focus shifting wasn't so bad when shooting close up. Now, let's move on and look at distortion and vignetting. These pictures are taken without in-camera corrections. At f2.8, we see some very mild pincushion distortion and some vignetting. Stop down to f4 or f5.6 and the vignetting brightens up. Now, let's see how the lens works against bright lights. Just an average performance here. There's a fair bit of broad flaring to be seen, but it's not too opaque. And finally, bokeh. Well, I've talked about that already, duh. But here are some more pictures anyway. I found that, even when not using the spherical aberration effect, the lens's bokeh is lovely and soft, although particularly bright areas can occasionally look a bit edgy and related to bokeh comes longitudinal chromatic aberration. This is something that's been a real issue in the past for Canon's macro lenses. However, on this RF model, it's a bit more under control than usual. We do still see just a little pink and green fringing on bokeh highlights at f2.8. They're reduced at f4, and at f5.6, it's gone. Overall, well, it's a shame about that little problem with focus shifting, because apart from that, this is probably just about the perfect macro lens. It focuses quickly and considerably closer than most other macro lenses, it has great build quality and it's fantastically sharp, with nice bokeh which can be manipulated in interesting ways. Its very expensive price means that I'm just on the border of whether to recommend or highly recommend it. If you can put up with the focus shifting problem, which isn't terribly serious, then this lens is a dream come true. Well, I had a blast testing out this lens. It definitely had some interesting quirks to unpack for you. If you'd like to support the work I'm doing on this channel, then check out my Patreon page in the description below. Supporters get all kinds of fun, exclusive content that I secretly really enjoy making for them. Ciao for now.